to all the teachers and the dear students. Now, Saropali Radha Krishna's birthday is celebrated since 1962. It was in the year 1962 when he became the president of the state of India. Most of his followers went to him and asked him, requested him earnestly to celebrate his birthday in a grand scale. But Saropali Radha Krishna disagreed with them. He just communicated that he has been a teacher all through all his life. Since he was a teacher all through all his, his life, his birthday should be celebrated in the name of Teacher's Day. And since 1962, the day has been celebrated as Teacher's Day. And you may be interested to know the contribution which is being done by this great man, Saropali Radhakrishna. What was his childhood? How he came up in his life? Where he worked? What he achieved? And what was the responsible position which was given to him? And how he discharged his obligations? And this is generally called as a contribution which is being made by Saropali Radhakrishna. Now, Saropali Radhakrishna was born in 1888 on September 5th and he was from a very, very poor middle class family. His father was Veeraswami and his mother was Sitama and he was the second child to the family. And he was born in Tiruttani, a village just 70 kilometers away from Madras. His uncle was Sitaramaya, sorry, his grandfather was Sitaramaya. Sitaramaya was a person from a village in the Nello district known as Saropalli in Andhra Pradesh. Now, this place, Tiruttani, is identified with a great musician as well. And it was identified with one of the greatest Carnatic classical music singers who is none but Muthu Swami Dikshitar. Most of the classical songs or the versions or the kirtanas which was sung by Muthu Swami Dikshitar are dedicated to Lord Guha. And Lord Guha's temple is there even today in Tiruttani. Radha Krishna being born as a second child was sent to school at the age of four. For a period of four years, between four and eight, he studied at Tiruttani. Between eight and twelve, he was admitted to a German missionary school. When he was admitted to a German missionary school, he was introduced to Bible as well. And later, it has helped him, remember, in conversations, especially in the area of philosophy. Thereafter, after studying four years in the German missionary school, this person was admitted to a school in Tirupati. And in this school, remember, Saropali Radhakrishnan studied for a period of eight years. And he completed his matriculation. So from Tirupati, after completing matriculation, Saropali Radhakrishnan shifted to Velour. And in the Dharma Prachar College, he was admitted for the, the what we call it the inter course. At that time it was called as the inter, what we call as the free university today. And he applied for the Madras University. Applied for the entrance examination. And in the entrance examination he was through. And after completing his inter, he came to the campus of the Madras University. Having come to the Madras University campus, he was enrolled for the graduation program and thereafter for the post-graduation program. I just intend to tell you, in the year 1909, he completed his BA as well as, well as MA and he took to philosophy. And in the philosophy course, he stood first and first class. And this was done in the Christian college. So he took admission in the Christian college Madras 
And in the Christian College Madras at that time, there were great scholars, most of them were British. One such scholar happened to be A.G. Miller. The second one had happened to be Professor Hogg. And there were plenty of others, all of them, they liked Srapali Radha Krishnan. And the command and the grit of the study which he had. It was in the year 1910, Srapali Radha Krishnan was admitted to an LT course. LT course is equivalent to the B.Ed course today, which was called as the training college, teacher's training college. When he was admitted to the teacher's training college, the director of the training college, or the principal of the, the LT college at Saidapet in Madras, was astonished by knowing that Sarapali Radhakrishnan knew philosophy so much. And then they made an investigation, how come this boy, he was not even, remember, 20 years or 16 years, was able to know so much about Indian philosophy. Now what had happened was, Sarapali Radhakrishnan's cousin had so many books in the area of philosophy. And he had not only so many books in the area of philosophy, he had lots of books in the area of ethics. And these books on ethics and Sarapali Radhakrishnan, ethics and philosophy, Sarapali Radhakrishnan had read and mastered. Having known the scholarship of Sarapali Radhakrishnan at the LT course, that is the B.Ed course of today, the director simply stated that you should be able to take lectures and others should listen. The course teacher just said, instead of he is taking the course, Sarapali Radhakrishnan should teach and take the course. That is where Sarapali Radhakrishnan came to be known. Now his LP, LT was over by 11 and Sarapali Radhakrishnan was in search of a job. And in addition to his utter poverty that was haunting the family, his father, Veda Swami, was a priest. And for a priest, remember, if you get, if they will get money only if there are certain pujas are arranged by some people. And in addition to that, he was working under a landlord. And under a landlord, his job was to collect the taxes and the revenues. This was no further. And he was looking for a job at a Christian college. And at the Christian college, what they did was, ultimately there was a Malayali center. Center for learning in Malayalam. Sarapali Radhakrishnan was attached to the center, center for learning in Malayalam. And this person, remember, did not know ABC of Malayalam. Although he did not know Malayalam, he was attached to the center, then Sarapali Radhakrishnan was actually teaching philosophy to these Malayali guys who have taken admission with the center. Then afterwards, in 1911, some of his professors recommended him to join Presidency College. The person from Christian College shifted to Presidency College and in the Presidency College he was appointed as an assistant professor. And for a period of six years, from 19, I can just tell you, 11, beginning of 1911 to 1916, he was working in the Presidency College. Now in the Presidency College, this Saropali Radhakrishnan has earned a name as a good teacher, a brilliant teacher. And he was an young teacher, had a good personality with amazing heights. And remember, in the year 1916 itself, he was selected as a professor at Rajamandri, a government college in Andhra Pradesh. He was suffering from a Hamletian dilemma, to be or not to be, to go to Rajamandri. But then most of his family members suggested that he should go to Rajamundri because ultimately it is his, uh, uh, his state, Telugu state, wherein he, he got a job. Now he goes to Rajamundri and in Rajamundri he serves between 16 to 21, so between 18 to 21. Now he served there. Now the point at issue is when Sarapali Radhakrishnan just complete, was just 15, he was not even his MA. He got married to a lady and the lady's father happened to be a railway uh, officer working in a railway department and name of his wife happened to be Shwakamamma and she was popularly called by Sarapali Radhakrishnan as Padma 
and from this marriage over a period of time, the next 15 years, six children were born. Of the six children who were born, five of them happened to be girls and only one son who was Dr. S. Gopal, who is popularly called as the Cambridge historian. He worked as a professor of history even at JNU. So he was the last son. Now Sarupali Radha Krishnan, when he was in 1916, goes to Rajamundri, wherein he works there. And having worked there, remember it was at that time in Rajamundri, he writes a beautiful book. And the name of the book is known as The Philosophy of Ravindranath Tagore. And the philosophy of Ravindranath Tagore was published at a later stage. And this book, remember when it was published, a copy of which was sent to Ravindranath Tagore himself. Ravindranath Tagore himself expressed surprise whether I have a philosophy of this kind. It was so scientifically analyzed, scientifically analyzed, examined and put to words. And Ravindranath Tagore said hats off to the man, hats off to the expression and the way he has brought and put in the philosophy into literature is a marvelous achievement by any person under the sun. Now what has happened was when he was serving in Raj Mundri, he had a friend and this friend is known as Professor C. R. Reddy. Professor C. R. Reddy happened to be the principal of the Mysore Maharaja's college. And C. R. Reddy had heard Saropali Radhakrishnan at the Presidency College. And he was interested to hijack this person to Mysore Maharaja College. That is how, remember, talented people are hijacked. And these days in the educational institutions, talent is a curse. And it is not treated as an advantage for the growth of the institution. So in such an hospitable climate, C.R. Reddy writes to Sarupali Radha Krishnan and requests him he should come to the University of Mysore. Sarupali Radha Krishnan ultimately accepted the offer of C.R. Reddy and goes as a professor to the University of Mysore. When he goes as a professor of philosophy to the University of Mysore, Professor Wadia happened to be the head of the Department of Philosophy. And there was another person, another uh, uh, philosopher, who also gave a good company to Sarupali Radha Krishna. And these two of them ultimately became great friends. Sarupali Radha Krishna remained there only between 1918 to 1921. And remember, in these two years, almost two and a half years, I just intend to tell you, Sarvapali Radhakrishnan became so famous and his contribution became a top of the town. His speeches, wherever he delivered, attended by thousands of people then. Intellectuals were after him to listen to him. The grit and the command over the language, the presentation and the art of expression was so lucid and it could not be bettered by anybody for the expression of the Sanskrit scholars at the time. So Rupali Radha Krishna, remember when he was in 1921, as I just told you, had written on Ravidana Tagore. And he was under work in writing another book on the Indian philosophy. It was at this juncture, in the state of West Bengal, there was a great Vice Chancellor. And this Vice Chancellor was a perfect, remember, a king of perfection and scholarship. And this Vice Chancellor, remember, wanted to get Sarvapali Radhakrishna as a professor of comparative philosophy to the George the Fifth King, George the Fifth Chair on comparative philosophy in the University of Calcutta. And this, this professor did not leave him. Sarvapali Radhakrishna did not want to go to Calcutta. He didn't want to go to Calcutta for the simple reason, remember, his family was huge with them. He had five daughters and a son. In addition to it, some grandparents, all of them had to be shifted to the University of Mysore and he writes a letter to the great professor. And, but then the professor was not prepared to accept. He should be able to tell me the vice chancellor who he was in the University of Calcutta. Such a great man. Yes, anybody? Don't know. Now, I shall tell you later. Keep it like this. <laughs> if I tell everything. Now, what has happened was, 
he was not prepared to serve Surapalli Radhakrishnan and Radhakrishnan was invited and ultimately he accepts the offer. And in 1921, Surapalli Radhakrishnan decides to go to the University of Calcutta. And remember, it was a shock to the entire Maharaja's College of Mysore. But then since he had accepted the offer, a naturally a send-off had to be given. The entire Maharaja College, remember, came in to give him a send-off. And in the send-off that was given to him, remember, there were two types of ceremonies. One is to take the carriage from the Maharaja's College, from his house to the Maharaja's College, and from the Maharaja's College to the railway station. And another is the carriage in which he was supposed to travel from the railway station to Calcutta. Both of them were decorated. Students had gone to the railway station decorated with the permission of the uh, railway authorities. Students came and they decorated the carriage which was to be drawn from the, his house to the Maharaj College and Maharaj College to the railway station. And when he was, the carriage was drawn from the Maharaj College to this, uh, the railway station, it was not drawn by the horses, it was drawn by the students. And when it was drawn, the biographer puts it, thousands of people on both sides gathered. And thousands of people gathered and they shouted and they were shouting slogans, Radha Pakistan Ki Jai. Remember, he was how many years old? It was just, remember, 1918, 88, 12 plus 18, 36 years old. A person with 36 years old was honored, respected, admired, applauded in the Maharaj College. Still it is there, the room where Sarasurapali Radhakrishnan joined, remember, stayed when he joined there. Now he goes to the University of Calcutta and he becomes the head of the, uh, the chair of George V on comparative religion and philosophy. Now when he became the professor and head, remember most of the people who are working in the center happened to be elders to him. Somewhere on the verge of retirement, some of them, them were only associate professors. And all of them, all of them, except Saropali Radhakrishnan was elders to him and these elders, although they liked his scholarship, did not like the person. They went to the extent of thinking that here is a man who denied promotion for them. Here is a man, because of him, a professorship is, remember, denied to these scholars. Such was the attitude, but his Saropali Radhakrishnan did not bother and mind and he started working again. Now the Vice Chancellor of the University, remember what he did was he wanted to introduce Srapali Radhakrishnan to the people of Calcutta. In the very first week in the Senate Hall of the University of Calcutta, he arranged speeches. And the speeches which Srapali Radhakrishnan delivered in the very first week earned a name far and wide. And he spoke on Indian philosophy. And he spoke on Indian literature. And he spoke on the dynamism of the Sanatana Dharma. Everyone started appreciating and in Calcutta University campus he became a talk of the town. Now there afterwards remember he wrote several books. And the book as I indicated the philosophy of Ravindranath Tagore was published first. And in 1921, 1925 Sarupali Radhakrishnan organized in the University of Calcutta the first philosophical congress. And the, for the first philosophical congress he invited Ravindranath Tagore to chair and to inaugurate. And such was remember the glory of the man and it established the glory of the university. The very presence of Sarupali Radhakrishnan in the University of Calcutta as professor of comparative religion remember made the people of the British government, the then British government to invite him to deliver nine lectures at the affiliated colleges of the University of Oxford. Now there was a a conference of the, common, the, the universities of the Commonwealth. So when they selected certain candidate from the universities of the Commonwealth from India, Sarupali Radhakrishnan was selected to speak at the affiliated colleges of the University of Oxford. Sarupali Radhakrishnan goes to, from Calcutta, he goes to the University of Oxford. Now his task was to speak about Hinduism and the relevance of Hinduism in the then climate, climate of 1926. 
Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan, when he spoke, in the first lecture when he spoke, he just said, if there are 12 religions in the world, the people belonging to all the 12 religions are in India. And remember, our principle of Hindu dharma is based on Sanatana dharma or eternal values. These values are immutable, everlasting. And it is accepted by the community of nations all through, all through the ages. And when he spoke about the Hindu culture, he said, Hindu culture is not a dead culture. It is original. It is peaceful. It is full of vitality. And it is synthetic in character. Thousands and thousands of people visited India. And at least hundreds of them invaded this country. Although they invaded this country, they could not destroy the culture of India. The culture of India survived the onslaught. On the contrary, the people who invaded this country were able to emulate and accept the best factors in their culture, which is the philosophy of Dharma. And when he spoke about Hinduism, the greatest achievement of a man in his life is not the money he earns, the building he owns, the empire he establishes, but the growth of his soul from age to age. The growth of his soul from age to age until it realizes self-realization and goodness. That is the message which he pointed out. When this was indicated, everyone appreciated and everyone loved. And Radha Krishna's name, remember, overnight it became famous when he delivered four lectures. These four lectures were, remember, copied. And Ellen Anwin, the publisher, came in to publish this book. That is how the Hindu view of life, Hindu view of life came to be established to be published in 1928 itself. So the first book came in England and his publisher was Ellen Anwin Publishers from England. So the name of the book is The Hindu View of Life. Now Sarupali Radhakrishnan, when he was still in the University of Oxford, he was told by the British government to represent the state of India and the British Commonwealth, the Commonwealth of Nations to the Harvard Philosophical Congress. You might be knowing, when I speak about the Harvard Philosophical Congress, it was held in the venue where our great Vivekananda spoke. Now it was, you might be knowing, in 1893, Swami Vivekananda spoke on what we call as the congregation of uh, uh, Matadipadis or religious heads, wherein he earned a name. And the first sentence which he said, he did not speak brothers and sisters of America. And similar opportunity was given to speak to Saropali Radha Krishnan as the representative of the state of India in the congregation of religions, of the religious masters. Radha Krishnan was very simple and in the congregation when he reached Harvard, all of them had brought their written papers. All of them had written their papers and they came and they were speaking about their influence, the superiority and all as the great Swami Vivekananda faced. Sarupali Radha Krishnan did not bother, nor it increased his blood pressure. When he was asked to speak, he went and spoke as tempor. And when he spoke as to Sarupali Radha Krishnan, when he spoke as tempor, he was just telling only one or two important things. The first important thing is, in India, each person has a standard of life. He may not be having a standard of living. Each person has a standard of what we call as life, but not a standard of living. Go to the house of the poor, the poorest of the poor, he also has a standard of living. Every morning he gets up. Even if he is staying in a hut and will have his bath and in his own style, he offers his puja to the God. That is what we call as a Christian goes to the church, a Muslim goes to the mosque and the poor and the rich doesn't make any difference. Oh, he classified and said, in India, a person may not be having a standard of living but he has a standard of life. And this standard of life is determined by the values which are determined by the Bhagavad Gita. And the Bhagavad Gita, which is supposed to be an eternal source of inspiration and a 
book which has to be read by everybody, to be known to everyone, gives this message, what's the message? So hopefully Radha Krishna when he completed his speech, two of the participants came and put a question to him. You Indians speak so well. You speak so marvelously. You speak so lucidly, so succinctly. Your articulation is a second to nine. None. But then, why your country is poor? Why your country is ignorant? Why there is so much of illiteracy in your country? With all your philosophy, richness, or the culture, you are not able to improve yourself. Surapalli Radha Krishna looked at those two and said, The great Jesus was born not to save himself, but to save others. This is the sentence which came in. The great Jesus was born not to save himself, but to save others. The great Jesus, when he was, remember, taken, remember, taken when in chains, barefoot and barehead, to the place where he was to be crucified, he just made the words of repentance. Forget my Lord, they know not what they do. That is why this is being quoted time and again, words of repentance. Forget my Lord, they know not what they do. So then Sarvapali Radha Krishna's approach was appreciated again. Remember Radha Krishna became very, very famous even in the religious congregation. See, the difference between Swami Vivekananda, Swami Vivekananda was a religious monk. But here is a man who was not a religious monk. He was educated and an MA in philosophy and an LT. A beard, whatever you call. And this person is speaking more than a saint. That's up to the man. That was the image which he earned. And afterwards from there he came back. When he came back, Remember, thousands of people gathered at the port of Mumbai. From there, when he went to Madras, again, there were thousands of people. And from there, when he carried his journey, even in Calcutta, remember, there were thousands of people thronged because they had read in the newspaper about Saropali Radha Krishna's speeches in England as well as United Kingdom, United States. Now, there afterwards, he came back and entered the university campus. When he entered the university campus, the earlier vice chancellor, a renowned person, known for education, known for commitment, had passed away. And another man had occupied the chair. And this person, the second person, happened to be the, the Professor Jadona Sarkar. Jadona Sarkar happened to be a wonderful scholar. And he was the one who wrote History of Aurangzeb in five volumes. And he is called as the Indian Gibbon. Gibbon happened to be the famous historian and he is called as the Indian Gibbon. But then what has happened was, Sarvapalli Radha Krishna, when he entered the campus, the colleagues from the same philosophy department had gone and just remember, told many things about him. With the result, remember, in the year when the annual report came in, they did not even mention about Sarvapalli Radha Krishna trip to United Kingdom and United States. That is the kind of respect which was given to the teachers. If it is prevalent then, it is prevalent now with the brute force. We are in a position to put the kandi or the work which is being done by a student under the carpet and someone else will be gaining the benefit. It has happened to Sarupala Radha Krishna. Now this, forget this, but then the great scholar, historian Jadana Sarkar actually was appreciating the scholarship of the man inside. But then he didn't want because he was afraid of his own colleagues in the University of Calcutta. But then it was at that time he found another supporter for him. And he was also working in the University of Calcutta and he was also young. And this person was none but Sir C. V. Raman. Sir C. V. Raman, you know, who won the Nobel Prize in the year 1930, was also in the University of Calcutta. There also in the department because he was too young and all, but all the professors, all the candidates had to remain without promotion because he was the only one professor at that time. And others did not have publications and the worthy of merit. So in circumstances such as this, there will be a dislike. This happened and both of them became good friends and did not bother. Now what exactly is the achievement of Sarapali Radha Krishnan between 1926 to 1930? Now when I speak of this, 
between 1926 to 1930, now he became the Dean of Arts and the Chairman of Humanities Center for a period of three years. And he became executive member, what we call as a syndicate member of the University of Calcutta. He became the academic council member of the University of Calcutta. And remember, for the Philosophical Congress, he invited Mahatma Gandhi to participate. Now that is where, remember, the, the image of the University of Calcutta went up because one person inviting and this person, remember, taking the entire university by surprise. The heroes of the time coming to the University of Calcutta and participating in conferences like this made them to think and realize. Now, when it was in the year 1930, the British universities invited him. They wanted him to be in Oxford forever. But that was not to be. Sarupali Radhakrishnan's, remember, served in the University of Calcutta for a period of 20 years. In 1940, he resigned. But then he was serving in the University of Calcutta itself. But then from there he was permitted to go to the University of Oxford time and again. Remember, he had delivered lectures not only in the University of Oxford. He delivered lectures in the University of Birmingham. He delivered lectures in the University of Liverpool. He delivered lectures in the University of South Staffordshire. How many? And remember, he, he was a student for some time at the old All Souls College. And he delivered lectures in the All Souls College as well. That has, remember, earned so much of him and he is almost like a British subject. The fame of Thoropoli Radhakrishnan in England was such the British University, that is the University of Oxford, established a center of philosophy in Oxford. And they gave so much of money to run the center and especially to make studies on Hinduism. Then, remember in, in the year 1932, Sarupali Radha Krishna was given the award of Doctor of Civil Laws by the University of Calcutta. A British University was honoring him with Doctor of Civil Laws. What, what else do you require? This was the achievement of the man. He was too young at that time. He was just 50 years when this doctorate came in. Now, he, things were moving like this and he was serving. Like his fame spread beyond the University of Oxford. Some other universities in the United States wanted him. Saropali Radhakrishnan goes to the United States and delivers lectures. And they published some of his monographs on their own so that the student should get the benefit to the maximum. Now when, then from there he goes to what we call as the People's Republic of China. At that time it was not People's Republic, it was the state of China, Taiwan. Then afterwards he went to Hong Kong. Then he goes to Indonesia. All these universities he visited and delivered lectures only on Indian philosophy, on Indian dharma and they established a name of his own. Now when we speak further, Sarupali Radhakrishnan, when, when he had a good name, in the year 1931, a university was established in Andhra Pradesh, that is called as the Central University of Andhra Pradesh at Altair. Radhakrishnan wanted to leave the University of Calcutta and go there as a professor of philosophy. But then that did not happen. Our C. V. Reddy, who was the principal of the Maharaja's College, had become the first Vice Chancellor of the University of Altair. And having known Sarupali Radhakrishnan, he invited him and Sarupali Radhakrishnan was the first doctorate to be awarded and given by the University of Altair, Andhra Pradesh. And when Reddy completed his tenure, Sarupali Radhakrishnan became the second Vice Chancellor of the University of Andhra Pradesh at Altair. As the Vice Chancellor, remember, he brought the best of men, best of talents. See, when a university in a university, when one person becomes the head, it is his duty to bring the best brain so that everyone gets the benefit. There may be certain people who are weak. Who are weak means, remember, they will be, become strong in the company of these people. That is why he was made the Vice-Chancellor. When he became the Vice-Chancellor of the University of uh, Walthair in Andhra Pradesh, he brought Hiren Mukherjee. Hiren Mukherjee happened to be a student at the University of Calcutta. And he brought another person, and both of these, I forget the names, both of them, they ultimately became the central cabinet ministers at a later stage when Pandit Nehru formed the government. And the second man happened to be Humayun Kabir. 
Humayun Kabir, you might be wrong, and another great scholar. And he became a member of the central government cabinet. He goes from Hyderabad to such a place. Then he improved the department of philosophy. Because then he did not require anybody, he only established it. Then he invited Sir C. V. Raman and requested him to establish a department of physics at Voltaire. Then afterwards, remember, he invited Vishweshwaraya, Mokshagundam Vishweshwaraya, to go over to Voltaire and establish a center for engineering. That is where Voltaire University was one of the best South Indian universities until this day. And the contribution goes to Saropali Radha Krishna. Now, when things were like this, Mother Mohan Mahalaviya had established the University of Benares in 1917. Mysore University was established in 1916. Saropali Radha Krishna had gone there in 1918. Whereas Benares University came in, as I indicated to you, in 1917, what has happened was Mother Mohan Mahalaviya himself was the Vice Chancellor, he served as the Vice Chancellor. Now he served as the Vice Chancellor until 1938 and remember he has become old. Age had his own role and he was not able to move from place to place. So at that time Sarapalli Radhakrishnan was in his mind foremost and he was requested to become the Vice Chancellor of the University of Banaras. And remember he appointed it with reluctance. He just said he has engagements in Oxford and simultaneously has to serve in the University of Calcutta. Simultaneously he has to work in the University of what we call as Benares. So he accepted the offer, goes there and there was a repeat performance. The best of scholars of India were attracted, attracted to the University of Benares. Even today the BHU is supposed to be one of the best universities in the ranking. And the foundation was laid down by this man, Sarapalli Radha Krishna. Now immediately in the year 1940, because of the difficulties, he resigned from the post from the University of Calcutta. And having resigned, remember, he tried to concentrate six months in Oxford and six months in Banaras. That is how he was able to manage the show. And in 1940-42, when he passed away, Sarapalli Radha Krishna resigns his job. And he came back and he settled in the Chennai, what we call the present Madras, wherein he had established a beautiful house. And the house is known as Girija. His name of the house is Girija. Now when he was in Voltaire, he says that he had introduced far-reaching reforms. And he was getting good money also. And he saved a lot of money and from that money, Girija was established in Chennai. And it was only for, he, he, he says in his biography, it is only for the ultimate satisfaction he wanted to stay somewhere, not with the government or with the, under anybody's power. Now then, India became independent. When India became independent, lots of people became, you know, several officials and Pandit Nehru was in search of certain people, good people. And Pandit Nehru knew Saropali Radha Krishna. He knew Saropali Radha Krishna because Pandit Nehru and Gandhi were invited to Voltaire. And when they were invited to Voltaire, remember the publicity went too much and everyone of those days knew that Pandit Nehru coming to Hyderabad and going for the convocation in Voltaire, Gandhi participating in the convocation. And again, Tagore coming down to the south. These were, remember, instances which history recognized, remembered and gave name to Saropali Radha Krishna. Now Vijayalashmi Pandit was appointed the first Indian ambassador to the state of Soviet Russia. And when she was appointed as the first Indian ambassador to the state of Soviet Russia, Stalin was the head of the state. And you might be knowing, Stalin was supposed to be a stubborn and hard-hearted man. If anybody have read something about Stalin, you would be able to appreciate. Stalin, remember, was so hard-hearted, he would eliminate all his enemies. That is why people always write history with the contempt of Stalin. They feared him. He was the, one, the most feared leader under the Senate at that time. And in circumstances such as this, 
He never gave any appointment or an audience to any ambassador. Vijayalakshmi Pandit stayed in the state of Soviet Russia in Moscow for two years. For two years for such a lady, it was difficult to get an audience with Stalin. And she came back and she was posted by Pandit Nehru as the Indian ambassador to the state of the United States. When the post fell vacant, there were two or three competitors. And one competitor happened to be Sardar K. M. Panikar. He happened to be a great historian and an ICS officer. And many wanted him to be appointed as the ambassador to the state of Soviet Russia. But then Pandit Nehru preferred Saropali Radhakrishnan as the Indian ambassador to the state of Soviet Russia. Many articles appeared. Why did Pandit Nehru chose Saropali Radhakrishnan, a philosopher, to a communist country? What diplomacy had to do with communism? What diplomacy had to do with communism was the question which was put. And many people said Radhakrishnan is not the correct choice. That too for a state of state like Soviet Russia. You, you may be knowing Harold Nicholson when he de defines diplomacy and name of the book is itself is diplomacy. A diplomat is a person who is appointed to another country to the nastiest things in the nicest manner. Whether Radhakrishnan will do the nastiest things in the nicest manner, being a philosopher, being a truthful person, being an honest person, never think of uttering a lie. That was the question which was haunting many. And Nehru preferred him, but then Radhakrishnan proved successful in the state of Soviet Russia. He mixed philosophy with the diplomacy and erected with a solid foundation. That is why the relationship which was established by Saropali Radhakrishnan in the first formative periods holds water even today, even today, in regard to the relationship between India and Soviet Russia. Now, Saropali Radhakrishnan worked there. Lots of dignitaries would visit him. Lots of dignitaries would visit him and ask them, ask him to write a forward to their books, which Radhakrishnan did faithfully. And he was requested to attend the lectures. Remember, when he was working in the state of Soviet Russia, he would work as ambassador six months in Soviet Russia and six months as professor of philosophy at the University of Oxford. And that was permitted by the government of India. Whether it is possible, whether anybody will be permitted today. Because of the nature and the integrity of the man, he was permitted to do this. And he did the job. Now, thereafterwards, Saropari Radhakrishna was called by Pandit Nehru. And he was called by Pandit Nehru to contest for the Vice Presidentship of the State of India. And he was supposed to leave. But then one famous instance took place a few days before this instance. And this instance happened to be the instance of April 5th, 1952. Saropali Radhakrishnan one fine morning received a letter from Stalin. And this letter from Stalin indicated that he should see him on any day. And the message of this letter spread like a wildfire. And most of the diplomats felt that Saropali Radhakrishnan is going to be killed. Because he was so cruel, Stalin was so cruel, so hard-hearted, he was a tyrant. Never accepted anybody's wishes. And somebody said, what happens? God, or, God only should save Saropali Radhakrishna. But then, on April 5th, 1952, Saropali Radhakrishna goes to meet Stalin at the presidential palace. And remember, it was like a fortress. And full of people, military people, and some of them with the civil dresses guarding the palace. As and when he entered the first door, Oh, a quadrangle was opened and the security forces allowed him to enter the second. When he entered the second and he was walking, the third door came in and the third door, when it opened, Stalin himself came, came and greeted him and took him. And afterwards, both Stalin 
as well as Saropale Radhakrishnan conversed by facing face to face, sat in a chair, looked at each other and conversed for three and a half hours. Now I shall just tell you some of the conversations, what was the main, remember, discussion that took place in the event. The first thing is, Stalin having looked at Saropali Radhakrishnan said, I have read many of your writings, but then it is just not possible for me to agree with a few of your writings. But there are instances where I have accepted your writings and I really appreciate the way you put it and a society should be the way you have written. That is one approach which he said. And a conversation between the two went on and on. And at one instance he made, just made a reference to Emperor Ashoka. I read the history of your country. And in your country there was an emperor who is known as Ashoka. And Ashoka was a man. Remember, he is totally different from other generals. It was Reverend Father Macphail who indicated in his book on Ashoka. So many generals in the world, so many generals in the world, rose to greatness because of two reasons. One is first they conquered and then saw. Or the other one is they will have saw and then conquered. Ashoka is the first ruler who conquered and then saw. And Ashoka is the only one ruler who conquered and then saw. He is the only one exceptionally exceptional ruler. All the others, remember, first one is the saw and then conquer. This man waged a battle known as the Battle of Kalinga. And in the Battle of Kalinga, three lakh people were killed and another three were maimed forever. Now if he were to do this and kill, finish everyone, he would have remained as an emperor only, but the moment he came in contact with the Buddhist monk, he decided to convert himself a Buddhist and become a Buddhist monk. Was this required for an emperor? You answer me. Here is an emperor, emperor with fame, administering justice, creating fear, then afterwards meeting a teacher, a Buddhist monk and getting converted into the Buddhist faith. Right knowledge, right action, right faith, right conduct. Kalas. This is not required at all. Then Saropali Radhakrishnan pointed out, it is the salient feature of the Indian soil. And when he said salient feature of the Indian soil, what do you mean by it? Stalin puts another question. Saropali Radhakrishnan answered it so beautifully. If wealth were to give satisfaction to a person, if wealth were to give satisfaction to a person, where was the need for Siddhartha to go over the forest? If wealth were to give a satisfaction for a person, where was Shuddhodana to go to the forest and meditate? The man by name Shuddhodana who established Jainism, remember you may be knowing for 12 years he did not wear a piece of cloth. And he goes to the extent of saying, wearing a piece of cloth, wearing a piece of cloth is a semblance of attachment. I don't want to get attached even to a piece of cloth. That is found salient in the mud, Mother Earth, or the state of India. When he stated like this, Stalin pointed out, now today you have come as the Buddhist monk, who just converted the great man to Buddhism. Then I said, if the time is ripe, if the time is ripe, I am here with you. Then the conversation goes and on and on. At one stage Stalin, remember, started weeping. And Radhakrishnan gets up and goes near him and puts his shoulder on his head. And just remember, 
patiently tells him, nothing to worry, everything will be in order. It was at this juncture, the great Stalin points out, points out, you are the only one person till now who have considered me as a human being. Till this day, no person who visited the state of Soviet Russia or who has worked as ambassador or anybody has considered me a human being. You considered me as a human being for the simple reason your religion permits to see good things in everyone. Your religion permits everyone to see good things in everyone. That was the talk and he wept and by keeping his head on his properly Radhakrishnan's shoulders and said, after your departure, I don't think I'll be able to survive. Radha Krishnan came in and became the Vice President of the State of India, but then Stalin survived only for, remember, six months and passed away. And during these six months, the relationship between Soviet Russia and India was cemented to such an extent. So many treaties were signed. So many negotiations took place. Nehru ultimately became a hero in establishing his such ties. That is where Pandit Nehru is being criticized. Although he believes in this democracy, the principles of democracy, his soul is actually in the state of Soviet Russia. And if he has made such a statement, here is the man who is responsible for it. Then everybody says. Now he came back here and served as the Vice President of the State of Soviet Russia. Remember, Sarupali Radhakrishnan became, before he became the Vice President in 1946 itself, he became the President of UNESCO. 1946, he became the president of UNESCO. And in this position, he served uh, until 1952. And when he became the president of the state of India, he goes to again the state of France, the headquarters of the state of UNESCO, to inaugurate the new building. Because he was the former president, now the president of the state of India. This is the credit which no one would get. When he became the vice president of the state of India, I just intend to tell you, he was the chairman of the Rajya Sabha. And the chairman of the Rajya Sabha was, did not belong to any party. And since he did not belong to any party, all parties respected him. All parties respected him with the echim of perfection. Radha Krishna, he says, yes, a philosopher speaking in the parliament like a god. The verdict was accepted by the parliamentarians without murmur. Perhaps he was the only one man whose verdict was accepted by everybody. Now as the Vice President of the State of India, he, he had to deliver lectures throughout the world. Even the state of Japan, he goes to Japan. And he goes to China. And when he went to China, he gets the information that his wife Shivokamamma or Padma was suffering with a serious disease and he comes back and stayed with her. But he was not able to save her. She passes away. And then, when he completed the Vice Presidentship for five years, Pandit Nehru wanted him to become the Vice President for the second time. Although he was not willing. Remember, he became the Vice President for the second time and carried on his job very well. When he was about to complete his Vice Presidentship, naturally, there were several people who were interested to become the President of this country, but then, Sarapali Radhakrishnan was the choice. Sarapali Radhakrishnan was the choice for the simple reason because Babu Rajendra Prasad, the first president of the state of India, had gone to Moscow. And he had gone to Moscow, remember, for about a month or so. Because in those days, journeys were all by ships. So at that time, Nehru requested him to act as the acting president of the state of India. And he came back. After his, after his coming back, Babu Rajendra Prasad, remember, was not keeping his good health. He became immobile. When he became immobile for 12 months, Sarupali Radhakrishnan was requested to become the acting president of India. Naturally, when he passed away, he was elected as the second president of the state of India. When he became the second president of the state of India, remember, it was such a gorgeous position. I just intend to tell you one or two instances. There appeared an article in London Times 
and this article was repeated in Manchester Guardian as well. And the article was written by none but Breton Russell. Breton Russell in the article clearly pointed out if Plato had visualized or indicated in his writing that the head of the state naturally should be a philosopher, the Plato's ideal today has come true. And Sarafali Radhakrishnan has become the president of the state of India. Plato's ideal, which was written in BC, has come true in AD. India has selected a philosopher as the president of the state of India. This was one comment which came in. Professor C. M. Jod, a great scholar in history and civilization, wrote back, what kind of admiration we can give to this man who proved to be one of the best speakers and put the British writers and British writers and speakers to shame. Here was a man who used to speak in public without notes. And what he spoke without notes happened to be marvelous pieces which cannot be bettered. The choice of words which he used to use, remember, even the best of the English makers, English language makers cannot find a better language than the better, which is chosen by Sarupali Radhakrishnan. And Sarupali Radhakrishnan as the president of India had to make one visit to United Kingdom and another to the state of United States. He had lecturing and speaking in universities was a common thing. I don't wish to elaborate. He has gone throughout the world. But what is important is, he decided to go to England. When he decided to go to England, remember, the Queen of England, especially in those days, were after proto protocols. Everything is by protocol. And even if you go with somebody, you should not speak. Shut your mouth and walk along with the Queen. Now the British people never ever opened an airport to anybody. But when they came to know that Sarupali Radhakrishnan is coming, the former pre Vice President of India, former Ambassador to Soviet Russia, and the Professor at Oxford is visiting as the first citizen of India to the state of England, they threw open an airport which was not open to anybody in Ethiopia. Sarupali Radhakrishnan landed there, M.C. Chagla was the High Commissioner of United Kingdom at that time. With great difficulty, he had issued 200 passes. And these 200 people were near the airport. And the Queen had come to receive and greet him. Sarupali Radhakrishnan soon after greeting her and saying, Namaste, just turned the other side and looked at the visitors, Indians, 200 of them, and said Namaste to them. And a discussion came in, it was very hot. Here is a man who violated the protocol. The next day, newspapers gave order to the people. But then there was a small comment also. Although he made, wished his people, which is a natural right, which a president of a state would do, it was unnoticed, unnoticed, for the simple reason, because of the simplicity of the man. It was simply done. And from there he was taken and on the second day he was, remember, there was a ceremonial welcome at the Buckingham Palace. After the ceremonial welcome in the evening, there was a function wherein dignitaries were invited. When Sarupali Radhakrishnan turn came, Sarupali Radhakrishnan was asked to speak. His secretary gave the prepared speech. Sarupali Radhakrishnan just tells him, keep it away. And he spoke two and a half hours. Read Chagla. Two and a half hours he spoke on Indian philosophy, contemporary issues, diplomacy and value addition to the current prevailing politics. Next day, M.C. Chagla received 100 phone calls. And he puts it, you have a president of this time. His mastery over the subject, mastery and skill on a gamut of issues is unimaginable. You are the lucky ones to have a president of this kind. And some of them spoke and said, you have to arrange a second lecture. We need to come because some of them could not attend. They wanted to attend. Now by public demand, another speech was arranged, not in the Buckingham Palace, but at the Windsor Manor, not at the hotel here. 
Oh, at Windsor Manor, remember Raja, Raja Krishna was able to play a similar role and it was well received, well taken and people appreciated. On the fourth day, he was supposed to visit All Souls College because there was a convocation and in the convocation they were supposed to award a special doctorate to him. Surapalli Radha Krishnan goes by train to the All Souls College. The rector of the university, the vice chancellor of the university and the chancellor of the university were present. And at the convocation he was given the honorary Kausa degree. And soon after the ceremony gets over, after his speech got over, he calls the rector and asks him, I want to go to the hostel where I stayed. See, it is not me and you telling, it is the president of the state telling. And immediately the rector said, sir, that can be arranged. Your excellency, that can be arranged. And that was arranged and he was taken to the, host to the hostel where he stayed as a student in All Souls College. Sir Upali Radha Krishnan, having gone there and sat for a while, said, I want to stay here tonight. Simplicity of the man, he wanted to stay in All, School, All Souls College hostel for that night. And security arrangements are to be beefed up. And they agreed and Sir Upali Radha Krishnan stayed there and spent the night at the All Souls College hostel. And the next day, the journey started next morning. The journey started when the journey started and it came on the road. He puts a question to M.C. Chagla, the High Commissioner. Where is L.A. Nanwin? Chagla was sharper than him. He said, sir, I can summon him to your office at Buckingham. Because all his books are published by him. No, no, what nonsense you are talking. I want to see him now. Then Chagla stops the car. Then he instructs the police officers to divert the route. Because president of India, president of a state is going on a route. And they go to Ellen Anwin. The Surapali Radha Krishna goes first. And his office was situated in the first floor and puts a call bell. When the call bell was put, remember, Ellen Anwin appears and he said, You president, what is this? I would have come and met you at Buckingham. He said, Don't worry. He goes inside. Sits for a while, puts the question, how my books are selling? And he gave some answer, thank you. They came back and returned to Buckingham Palace. And from there he came. Similar things happened in the state of the United States as well. The ambassador records this. Now, I just intend to tell you, as the president of India, what he has done. Now, as the president of India, remember during the course of the President of India, one instance which I just intend to speak to you, the war with China took place in 1962. And when the war with China took place in 1962, Krishna Menon was the Defense Minister. There were several complaints against Defense Minister. And people were criticizing him and he should be removed. Sarapali Radha Krishna prevailed on Pandit Nehru for the removal of Krishna Menon. And in his place, Y.B. Chavan was brought in as the Defense Minister of India. This is one. The second instance happened to be an instance where the President, you might be knowing Lal Bhadur Shastri, goes to the state of Soviet Russia. 1965, where in the state of Pakistan attacked India. After the attack, they go to Tashkent for a conference, a mediation conference. The president of the state of Pakistan also had gone there. And at the at Tashkent in the state of Soviet Russia, the deed was signed. On the same night, before his return, Lal Bhadur Shastri, the Prime Minister of India, passed away. When he passed away, remember the question of choice of the future Prime Minister came in. And it was Saropali Radha Krishnan who was responsible in immediately administering oath to Gujarali Nardanda. Gujarali Nardanda was appointed as the Prime Minister of the state of India. There afterwards, remember, the cabinet met and the parliamentary board selected Mrs. Gandhi as the Prime Minister. And when Mrs. Gandhi was selected as the Prime Minister, remember, again, history repeated, she was sworn in by his President Radha Krishnan as the Prime Minister of this country. And as the Prime Minister of this country, remember both of them were in good terms initially. 
But the Zakir Hussain was the vice president then, he was also a scholar. Most of the parliamentarians were preferring not Saropali Radha Krishnan but Zakir Hussain. Having realized the problem, Radha Krishnan, remember as and when the term came in, did not insist or ask for an appointment, he came back to so what we call as his place in Tamil Nadu. Now I just intend to speak to you on two things, the best of the greatest awards came in. Sarupali Radhakrishnan got the Bharat Ratna in 1954. And remember at that time he had completed only two years as the Vice President of the State of India. Sarupali Radhakrishnan was the man, he gave Bharat Ratna to Lal Bodhra Shastri. He was the person who was responsible in giving Bharat Ratna to and as the president of the state of India, he had done major things. One is he was the man who opposed the death penalty and banned it. Death penalty was put an end to. The second, the second thing which he has done was president's office was open to everyone on two days in a week. Now you cannot go near because black cats, remember, take you to a place wherein you will not, you will not be kept in hibernation. Situation is that far. But then the office was thrown open to everyone. And Sarapali Radha Krishnan not only did these two major changes, brought several reforms as well. And thereafter the last part of his life was not that good. Remember one day he was just, when he was in office, he was just seeing a Telugu movie. At that time symptoms of paralysis appeared on him. Although doctors appeared and cured, Remember, they could not stop. When he went to Chennai, he was given what we call as the the Bharat the, the uh, we have some uh, Zakir Hussain was the president of it, Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan Fellowship. He was appointed as the first fellow honor of Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan. And when he became bedridden, it was in 1975. He was given the Templeton Award. Templeton Award from the University of Oxford for a 40,000 pounds. At that time he was immobile. He was not able to understand. He lost his memory. He was suffering from paralytic attack. And remember, he fell in a bathroom and afterwards every part of his broken day by day. When he received the Templeton Award in the month of April 1975, the entire amount of 40,000 was recent, returned to the University of Oxford. And the authorities, especially Radha Krishnan, Skith and Kin, requested that there should, be, there should be a fellowship which should be introduced in the name of Radha Krishna. Remember, it was even today, this fellowship is being used by everyone. Whoever is interested in pursuing in the study of philosophy is entitled to get a fellowship. He must have enhanced the fellowship as well. And he was the one who got the Doctor of Civil Law's first one. And in his name, not only in the University of Oxford, even in other universities, fellowships and philosophy were introduced. The British were the highest. Remember when he went to the University of Oxford, to the University of Calcutta, for a period of two years, he took his daughter and daughter-in-laws. They were also made to study in the University of Oxford. That was the greatest benefit, if he puts it. And that is where I was able to give English education to my daughters and daughter in laws because they had only one son. Now you may be interested to know what exactly is the contribution of Sarapali Radha Krishna. Now the contribution of Sarapali Radha Krishna is, remember, an ordinary student, many people put a question. Now the question is, why you have not gone? to study abroad. And some people would put a question to him, in which foreign university you have studied? So for these two questions he used to answer several times, I would prefer to teach in a foreign university than going there for studies. What is the meaning of it? That means his knowledge which he has earned here is not inferior to anybody's. That is Sarofali Radha Krishna. The other one is, he wrote a dissertation at the MA level. And at the, at the MA level, when he wrote the dissertation, it was called as the ethics of Vedanta. See? 
The ethics of Vedanta happen to be one of the best dissertations ever written. One of the writers points out, it is here he valued ethics so much of anything, beyond anything. That is where his decisions, wherever, whenever, however, at any place that was taken was based on values. And teachers are supposed to carry values. If the teachers don't have values in them, remember, neither they can value others, nor they find the values in others. That is the message. That is why Teacher's Day is celebrated. Most of us, 99% of the teachers, do not even know anything about Radha Krishna. That is why wherever I went, I used to speak on Sarupala Radha Krishna because it is our duty to convey to the generation which come after us to know about the values, why his birthday is celebrated as Teacher's Day. Because he was a teacher for, for excellence. Thank you.